Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson, dear RT guests, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be with you at this fantastic uh, event, Arctic Circle 2018. Um, what I will address here today is a topic that is extremely dear to me, which is science and education, and how we can promote a more informative decision-making taking place with using both education and scientific knowledge. And what I will address here are basically uh, three topics. First, Arctic data. What do we have as regards to Arctic data? then new scientific knowledge, what have we, what have we accomplished, uh, accomplished and what can we do better and what are the key cooperation that we're taking place right now, Iceland and our key partners. And then thirdly, which is extremely important, that's the people of the Arctic. Even though we're here, we're gathering all kinds of new information, we're forming new relationships, but we can never forget there are people that are living in the Arctic and they will have to be at the center of decision making. So I'm going to address these three topics here today. But first, I kind of uh, want to go over some cold, hard facts and uh, remind us all why we are taking this so seriously in all international cooperation and not just only as regards to foreign policy, but also education, scientific cooperation. Uh, I maybe don't have to remind us here that are gathered here that how air temperature has been changing. And I thought it's just unbelievable fact that in the high north in November 2016, the temperature, air temperature were 20 uh, degrees higher than uh, it normally is. This is a huge change. The same thing applies to the Arctic ice, which once lingered throughout one year and into the next, but that's not the case anymore. Uh, it goes without saying that the spillover effects are tremendous. It, and the same thing is with the jet stream, which has shifted profoundly as a result of warming event. The IPCC report was just issued last week, and there are some facts there also that we cannot ignore. Uh, the coral reefs, we will see the oceans are being more polluted. We see very sensitive ecosystems around the globe that will be ser seriously damaged. And then, of course, our glaciers in Iceland uh, are expected to vanish completely as a result of, of, of climate change. Uh, this is a picture uh, from Greenland in 2010 and then in 2014. You can just see uh, this is a graveyard and the dramatic change as regards to higher air temperatures in, in Greenland. But let's not lose hope as we were discussing hope here on, in the previous plenary session. And we're all here gathered because we have a strong belief that Something can be done, and that's why we're all here. Uh, as I said, I'll go over the Arctic data, the new scientific knowledge, and the people of the Arctic. Arctic data. What we're trying to work at and what we want to improve is that the, to enha enhance the quality of the data. Because this is so extremely important, what we are discussing, Basically, the, the changes of the world and not uh, as regards to the climate change and the economic changes. So the quality of the data, we need to make certain that we have the highest quality of data in front of us. Another aspect which we think is extremely important, that is to encourage research co uh, cooperation. And I've been astonished meeting all different individuals here uh, our world-class scientists, NGOs, young people, everyone wants to work together on this topic because it's so urgent. Another thing that we can accomplish is that we can increase efficiency and avoid duplications of, of the work that we're doing. By cooperating better and more efficiently, we can uh, speed up the production of new knowledge and new innovation. 
So it's of key importance that we all work together. Another important aspect is also that we can improve uh, transparency in research. By bringing everyone together in such an event that we have here at the Arctic Circle, and also with the Arctic Ministerial Cooperation, I think we can work more effectively and efficiently on this important topic. So what is happening right now and what have we been working on just very recently? New scientific knowledge. Uh, I, the China Icelandic Arctic Science Observatory at Kaurhol uh, will be opened on Monday, which is a great co uh, cooperation between the Polar Research Institute of China and the Icelandic Research Center, Rannis. This has been a project that has been worked at for the last six years, and we're finally seeing uh, the result of all the hard work of our scientists. And I am very hopeful that we can gather new data, high quality data on, on what's happening uh, around us as regards to climate change. Another thing that we're working on is mapping of the ocean floor around Iceland and the Marine Research Institute has recently launched. This is very important for Iceland. Uh, still around 30% of export revenues come from uh, us fishing. So this will always be uh, a key matter for Iceland. Another thing that we're working on, that's uh, mapping the fishing grounds and the, fra uh, the fragile ecosystem, of course, also with the Marine Research Institute. Uh, another issue that I would like to mention is the agreement on enhancing international Arctic scientific cooperation, which was signed by the Arctic Council in May, uh, on May 23rd uh, this year. This is the third legally binding agreement that we have as regards to the Arctic cooperation. One is on, on uh, source and rescue, uh, and this one as regards to scientific uh, cooperation. And the third one is, uh, which I can't completely remember because I didn't put it in my notes, but I hope I'm forgiven by uh, everyone here. But this is a very good example on how we can deepen the cooperation as regards to the uh, on the Arctic Council. And the third topic of my presentation is the people of the Arctic. It's clear to me that if we want to have sustainable policies going forward, we need to include the people that are living close to the Arctic and uh, because if we don't include them, we will not have sustainable and forward-looking policies uh, in this area. So I think research needs actively to contribute to sa safeguarding the livelihoods, the health, and the well-being of the people living in the Arctic. The task is to integrate science and new uh, knowledge into the decision making. We need to respect values, social systems, culture, and history. This is of essence of all successful policy making, not only today, but around history. And what we're also looking at is that we will have more active participation of social sciences, and we'll have more research that connects uh, social science and other research taking place in this area. So the proposals that we have is that we put science and education to action at the local level. We'll have local knowledge. Uh, that needs to be the approach that we take. And we need to create and sustain platforms of exchange between scientists, policymakers, and local people. I'm going to mention one extremely good example that we have here uh, going back in history. In Iceland here, modern glaciological research in Iceland started in the 1930s. Uh, there was an exhibition on Vatnajökull, and there was the Swedish geological uh, Hans Alman, uh, who basically was in charge of it. But his key emphasis was always that he would have the local people with him. So he had uh, a man called Jón Eithorsson, 
uh, one of the Icelandic first meteorologists, and then a student called Sigurður Thorensson, who became one of the Iceland's best known geoscientists. They were there all working on this project, how to, how to measure the advance, advancement and the, the retreat of the glaciers. So they would have each year the local people basically measuring the glacier. And by that, they spread knowledge and were able to track the developments that we now see and because we have all this good data. If uh, Hans hadn't involved the Icelanders, I'm not certain that we would have this good, high-quality data on our biggest glacier here, Vatnajökull, and the whole world might not have and see how things have been changing uh, in the last decades. Uh, Hans called this climate and betterment. And I think that's also a, a very good word for what we're addressing here today. Uh, the photos that you've seen here and I've used is uh, by a person called uh, uh, Ragnar Alexson, and he just received a uh, award the other day. And I thought the words that he used was very powerful when he said, the people of the Arctic are not participating in the decisions, but rather the people living much further south. And I think we should have this in mind when we're doing the policy making, that we need local people in order to have sustainable and successful policy making. So what these three topics, I think we're addressing it quite effectively. We have excessive, uh, extensive cooperation as regards to the data. We have new scientific knowledge in the making, and we are aware and we wanna do more inclusive policies going forward. So dear guests, thank you very much.